So today we are going to upgrade some EDSB antennas. Uh, I've had a system up on the roof for about three years now with a homemade J-pole. And we are going to finally upgrade to a big boy, a big boy antenna sp uh, specifically made for ads B. We'll, uh, we'll see up on the roof. All right, so we're up here on the roof. This is my little radio mast. It's got a two meter 440 antenna, my Raspberry Pi and ads B antenna, and then a TV antenna. TV antenna is going to be coming off. We're going to be getting rid of that because I'm not using it anymore. Uh, two meter antenna is going to get some, a little love connection ceiling and connection inspections. I noticed my SWR is getting a little high on that. And then we're going to be pulling this box that's been off of here. It's got a Raspberry Pi inside of it. We're going to be pulling that off, bringing it down to get a new antenna attached to it. We'll pull it, pull it in. And like I said, it's been out here for three years, so it'll be interesting to open it up on the bench and see what everything looks like in there because it's it's open for ventilation and has a fan running in it. So we're gonna see uh, we'll see what that looks like. We'll uh, gonna go ahead and pull it down here and uh, see you back in on the bench. All right, so we got the box with the Raspberry Pi and the homemade J pull pulled down. Um, just doing some general inspections here. You can see the fan's got a ton of dirt in it being up there for three years a little bit on the output so i'm really uh looking forward to seeing what it looks like in there i got the raspberry pi camera kind of recessed in here i was hoping to use that to be able to take some uh some time lapses up there but that that failed very early on i should actually say it never never worked to begin with so i'm not sure if it was a power issue or what or i think i think the ribbon cable in there is really sensitive uh and then the main reason for doing all this is to replace this this homemade j pole uh, with some with a, uh, an ADS-B exchange uh, 978-1090 uh, dedicated antenna. Um, so I'm hoping to see a little bit, a little bit of a, uh, a signal improvement there since this J-pole was whipped up from scrap, never had uh, any kind of an SWR uh, check on it and any kind of tuning just because I lack, lacked the equipment and was frankly too lazy at the time. Um, so yeah, been up there for three years, looks pretty good, maybe, maybe a little, uh, mud dauber inclusion or something going on there, so it'll be interesting to see what that looks like inside, but I have not been inside of here, uh, fan still works, which is pretty sweet, a uh, big plug for Noctua fans, uh, it's been maintenance free, hassle free, and hopefully it'll keep going, uh, for the life of this little box, but, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this open and, uh, see what it looks inside. Okay, so Tim from the future here. I got you guys up on a tripod and I set up some new recording gear, really just a uh, Bluetooth headset because I was sick of using this wired headset that I'm showing there, but it turns out that the Bluetooth audio quality is terrible. So wired headsets the way and or dubbing from the future like I'm doing now. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and tear into this here, and check out the inside and uh, see how it looks. So I don't have a ton of nice tools, but one set of tools that I do have is a couple snap-on screwdrivers. These ratcheting screwdrivers, they're like 60 bucks, but it is the best $60 you will ever spend on a tool. Even if you only have one screwdriver, this is the one to have. So just uh, undoing these captive screws here real quick and uh, we're going to take a look inside our weatherproof enclosure. So first thing I noticed there, camera cables disconnected. I'm pretty sure I did that, uh, but when I hung it up the first time, just because the camera was not working. So here's kind of a little summary of what we're looking at. We got a fan uh, for pulling air into the enclosure, cool things. Uh, the things heating up in there mm -hmm. is an issue I had early on. Once I installed the fan, I never had an issue. You can see it's pulled in a lot of dirt, dust, and probably pollen, given that we're in Missouri, and it's a constant here. So we'll have to clean that out. Not a big deal, but we'll get it cleaned out. Maybe good maintenance procedure every couple years. Uh, 
kind of show in there. So so to the to the layout, I have a Raspberry Pi running to a USB hub, and then I have the USB hub and Raspberry Pi powered independently off of a 5 volt regulator, so that I can feed 12 volts into there from a power supply down inside the house. Uh, make sure that everything is gets powered. That's another issue I had was these little radar box dongles and other uh, RTL SDR dongles suck up a lot of power and they'll brown out the Raspberry Pi. Uh, ignore the watch issues I'm having there, but it's a quick little overview. It's a, it was a week, this was a quick weekend project for me, so it's kind of stuff that I had laying around at the time, but it ended up working out really well. And for having been up there three years without ever being touched, this thing held up really well. There's no corrosion, uh, which tells me it's been pretty dry, if if not always dry in there. And uh, yeah, we'll, we're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up, uh, figure out how we're gonna mount our antenna and uh, get it back up on the pole. So I can't remember if I have to dub over the next clip, but uh, either you'll hear Tim for the future or Tim at the time of recording. So talk to you then. Editing Tim here again. Got some sped up video. I'm gonna kind of show tearing apart the box and removing the antenna and add speed dongle. So it's just a standard Adsby radar box dongle, nothing too special. This one runs pretty cool, which is another reason why I used it over some of the other other dongles. Uh, and then the antenna is just attached to the side using some PVC pipe clamps from Home Depot. So nothing too special there. It's just a PVC pipe with two end caps and a 3D printed spacer uh, inside holding the J pole that I made from a coat hanger. So I'm going and pulling off the uh, end cap, and you can see a little coil of wire there, or a coil of coax, uh, and then the coat hanger J pole. So it's J pole lengths just used, uh, sized using an antenna calculator. So nothing too crazy there. I didn't do any tuning or uh, adjustments. I probably could have, you know, trimmed it and adjusted it uh, based on the distances and. Uh, reception that I was receiving but that's a lot of work to go up and down the roof trim adjust check your distances and your reception and then uh, rinse and repeat so I didn't do it so I'm just pulling out the uh, three printed spacer that I have there that um, was used to hold hold that the antenna inside of the PVC pipe uh, I have some better equipment coming I mean relatively speaking it's a nano VNA so I'm looking forward to being able to see where this antenna actually resonates and uh, how close I actually was. I, uh, I don't think I was very close, but it's worked well for the past three years. So uh, see you the next clip. All right, we're all cleaned up and uh, just figuring out how I want to mount my antenna here. The camera, throwing in the hat. I think the module's dead. Uh, no matter what I, what I could do, I just kept getting errors. Uh, apparently these are super static sensitive and my guess is I probably hooked it up with the pie, pie running fried it so uh, Don't do that um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this antenna out of this thing came with just massive. I think this is like the M M8 uh, Attach hardware, but I'm not going to use these because I'm not going to be mounting it directly to the pole I'm going to mount it to the case. I'm going to use Use this existing plate we're gonna have some just random image hardware I found. We're just gonna mount that to there. It's absolutely overkill going into plastic, but uh, this isn't a this is a throw together project, not uh, something that a ton of planning has gone into. So let's go ahead and get that hooked up. Go ahead and get that get that installed so we can get this thing back on the pole. All right, well there we go. It's all back together. Got self amalgamating tape on the connection, trying to protect that better than I did the last time. Last thing I need to do is get these holes plugged up. Get this hole, get this hole plugged up. Fan's going, she's powered up. I'm gonna go uh, check, remote in, check the connection, make sure I'm at least getting getting some signal, even though I'm in the basement. Should at least have a couple jets uh, before she goes back up on the pole. All right, we're reinstalled. This antenna's taller and I don't have that uh, um, TV antenna on the pole anymore, so I was able to pull it, locate it down a little further. Um, 
still not the best setup because it's got it's gonna be blanked looking south by this uh, by the actual pole itself but we'll see how we'll see how it works she's up there I'm gonna go down go down and get it fired actually I got a kind of a little issue with uh, some wasps I got to take care of first so we're gonna go down get it fired up and see if see if we're seeing the improvement that I'm hoping for so uh, we'll catch you we'll probably be looking at my computer screen when we come back okay so we're back at the PC uh, as I kind of said we would be uh, a little later in the afternoon here just checking up on flight aware and uh, the sky view that they they provide uh, so this is all coming from the antenna that we just upgraded and I gotta say I'm, I'm pretty happy pretty happy with what I'm seeing uh, this view previously we would almost never see anything outside of this 100 nautical mile range uh, now we're seeing you know out past uh, past 150 nautical miles um, tracking stuff almost over Kansas City from uh, from St. Louis, which is pretty sweet if you really think about it. Uh, we still have some some blanking issues kind of down here to the uh, to the southwest, um, and that's kind of you can kind of kind of see based on um, what we what we would expect to be seeing. Um, there's some lower altitude stuff, but 20,000 feet we should still be picking picking him up. Uh, but for the most part, we're still we're still getting pretty decent view down there. So overall, overall, I think I'm happy. I think we're going to see some some big improvements here compared to what we've seen previously. Um, pulling into the other uh, the other view here, um, just to kind of look at coverage. So we can look at we can look at the last 24 hours here, and you can see we're we're picking you know 200 250 miles. Not not a ton of data coming in from over there, but still more than more than previously compared to let's let's pick a previous Saturday where we, um, you know, you can see we don't have anything out past 200 200 nautical miles. So I, I think that's pretty good. That's a market improvement um, already, which is is pretty awesome. And I'm gonna look and enjoy watching and seeing how that uh, how that prolifer proliferates over time. So if you're up in the air about you know, running one of those ads B exchange antennas. Um, I think it's probably well worth the money, especially if you're actually trying to reach out there and uh, uh, really optimize your uh, feeders uh, feeders range and try and get as many many positions in aircraft as possible. So, uh, if you're just trying, if you're just messing around and you know you have maybe your feeder mounted down inside your house or you know you're not trying to optimize things as much, maybe maybe not worth it. Maybe stick with a homemade antenna. But um, yeah, for for what it is and uh, what they cost, I, I, I gotta say it's a, a pretty market improvement. So I'll probably make another video here in the future uh, once this runs for a couple days to really get a decent comparison of you know maybe uh, how many positions I'm seeing um, over time. You know, get some actual averages and some actual data put together. Uh, so, so look for that. That'll be the. Uh, that'll obviously be the, you know, where the uh, uh, rubber meets the road, so to speak. Of you know, did we actually see a market improvement, or are we just maybe maybe lucky and picking up some some more aircraft today than we usually do? But um, until then, uh, we'll we'll be talking to you.